My name is Mususu Kaonda. I'm from Zambia, Lusaka. I'm here studying a, a PhD in material science. That's uh, basically looking at recrystallization of uh, steels. And basically the aim is um, at the end of it all you, you want to try and reduce product, uh, production costs and also you want to maximize on a you know, production rate by being able to predict the end product in terms of the strength of the, the material that you're going to use. Zambia is mainly known for copper, copper mining, not steel. There have been several feasibility studies on how we, we can get into steel because as you know, if a country has steel, I think that's the backbone of, of a, a thriving economy. There's one company that has started, I think they've been running for about five years, it's a steelworks. And I intend to be part, actively part, uh, take part in that in terms of offering consultancy and trying to work with, with them. And also, my my project has to do with a, a finished product, value adding to what what you have mined, and which is currently one of the biggest problems that we have in Zambia. We do not have a very strong manufacturing industry. We do not have. Uh, when we mine our copper, we, we, ex we, we export it, we are not finishing it off. I'm from a humble background. My father was um, a technician, electrical technician, my mother a nurse, and um, I'm from um, a family of four. I'm a mother, I have three children and a husband, and they are with me here in the UK supporting um, my dreams, I guess. I think my father used to encourage me, I think, that you would become an engineer because I was good in mathematics. So he, f I think naturally, because he was working for uh, Zesco, an energy company uh, back in Zambia. So naturally, I think he thought that maybe if you're good in mathematics, then what should become an engineer? So from, um, I think the time I was in um, year 11, year 10, my father had already started talking about me becoming an engineer and I think it, that, that started forming in, in me. And then later on I, I found myself at the University of Zambia. Uh, second year I had to make a decision. I still wanted to do engineering but I think I wasn't quite sure which engineering I wanted to do. And um, I finally decided that I wanted to do metallurgy. After finishing I worked for Concola Copper Mines, which is a mining uh, company in Zambia. And um, after working for about a year, I was called back to the university to, to um, take up the position of a staff development fellow in order for me to upgrade myself to a master's level and later on be appointed a, a lecturer at the University of Zambia, which I did at um, the University of Liverpool, came to England on the Commonwealth Scholarship and pursued my master's degree and went back and was appointed uh, a lecturer first female lecturer for the School of Mines since uh, the inception of the University of Zambia. So when you decided to do your original course in metallurgy, was it very unusual for a woman to do that? It was very unusual in that um, there were laws then that never allowed women to, you know, to go to study metallurgy or mining engineering. So when we decided uh, there were two others ahead of me, and I was the third to be trained as a metallurgist, a female metallurgist in the school. It was very unusual because I think um, people were just beginning, I think, to accept the fact that a woman can do metallurgy. People believed that metallurgy was the hardest course in, in, the, in the school, and I think people were watching us very closely to see whether we will finish or not. So it was, um, it was a big challenge. I think it was a it was a, a bold step, but with two people ahead of me, females ahead of me, and seeing how they were progressing, though they were just a, a year ahead of me, I was encouraged that I could also do it. I could also pursue that. And is the situation improving now? Is it becoming easier for women like yourself to work in your field? Yes, it is. Uh, currently, the, I think the uh, the school of mines. Uh, has about 9% nine per nine of the, the uh, total students there are female. As compared to when I was a student, I was the only female student then in the School of Mines, but now you have about 9% of the, uh, the total number of students in the school being female. So yes, it is tremendously improving. When, when you were growing up, did you have good teachers who were able to tell you about different possibilities apart from your father? Were your teachers good at saying you can go into these fields, you don't have to, as a woman, you don't have to be restricted in what you do? 
no. <laughs> no. Um, there, there are not many career advisors. We do, we do have such offices. At the school I was, there was a careers office. But in terms of career guidance, there's not so much done. So we need to work on that. I think maybe as universities or as individuals work with the career guidance teachers, the people who guide these this students. Back home I was working with um, the Engineering Institution of Zambia and that's their core business, is to m make aware the need for science and engineering, take it to the, the to primary schools and to secondary schools and make these kids aware about the importance of doing science and engineering. So that's one of the things that that institution does is front the role models, front those people who are successful, who have made it in that field to these uh, primary going uh, uh, school kids or secondary going school kids so that they, they at the very early age, they are mentored, they, 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 they are made aware that it is a possibility that they can pursue such, such fields later on. And I think that it is very important that um, they should be able to know at a very tender age. I think one of the reasons why I studied engineering or thought about studying engineering is because my father was talking about it and I thought, well, it's a possibility. I think he believed in me. And some of those kids out there, they've never heard, they've never heard about engineering, they've never heard about science. All they hear about, especially females, is that it's a difficult subject and it's for men. And your, your children, you said you've got three, three children. Yes. And are they boys or girls or a mixture? All girls. All girls. Uh -huh. <laughs> so what do you want your girls to do when they, when they grow up? Well, they have to, they have to make a, a decision on their own. I really can't force them to say, can you do a science-based uh, course? If you wanted to do um, a business-related course, they can go ahead and do that. But of course, the, the, they have the opportunity to make a choice. They have seen their mother an engineer, and so if they wanted to become an engineer, it's a possibility. They have somebody who has, who has um, gone through that path, so it's not going to be difficult for them. And it's something they're already thinking about. They know there's a woman can become an engineer, a man can become an engineer as well. If I wanted, I could do business. So their horizon is, is broadened.